Tara. Yes, that's how long she took. She even wants to stay there. She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat, and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. Something about our cockpit grid was bothering us. Maybe because our lid was higher than the floor, but we decided to make her one level and a lot more aesthetically pleasing. We used Bilal wood to make our wood strips. We're on our way to go get some more bloody wood. Bloody wood. What wood is it? Uh, some balau. Balau. Indonesian hardwood. So we're gonna go get some wood so that we can finish up the stacking that is taking longer than expected, but it's worth it because <laughs> it looks bloody good. Once everything was glued and screwed into place, we then cut off any uneven edges and sanded the edges down. Yo! Now that looks freaking sweet! It looks like two days to do that thing. Very deceiving how freaking long things take. Yeah. But it's no. in, done. It's out of proper balau wood. So it'll last us many, many years. Hopefully. That looks so freaking good. It's all same level. And there's a drain underneath there. Everything can still flow the way we want because we ran it lengthwise. So the water can still flow. It's good. It's awesome. Very nice. We sealed up the wood and added about five coats to each side and she was ready to go in. Ta -da! So it's like half past seven in the morning, we just woke up and we slept on the boat last night because we needed to get some work done and what do you want? Breakfast. So we make some breakfast. So we're gonna snap some eggs and some sausage and we're gonna make a South African omelet. <laughs> oh, that's cheese sausage. I watched this thing the other day, it's about jambalaya and I, it seems like a dish where you just mix everything in it and it seems like that dish, jambalaya What the hell's a jambalaya? 
it's like where they mix a whole bunch of stuff together like when they're cooking and you just like mix whatever you feel like I watched it on YouTube while I get breakfast going check the editing at 8 o'clock in the morning hey babes Annie the champ get your refill You know what time it is, sweetheart? Time to party! I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. Gonna ride till I can no more. Cup put flooring. Make me climb up here. Okay, so cockpit fiber glass grid. Which we changed to wood. Yeah. You're done. Oh, come on, don't you <laughs> stay on me. And then another one is that finish up the electrical panel. Come, pull them off. Pull them off. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Done. So sweet. What you doing, mister? Washing our tanks. These are diesel tanks. We're washing so, so that we can uh, prep them to go back in and get them clean, get them sealed up, make sure that the fittings are the way we want them, and then we're gonna install them. It's strong. Yeah, it's plenty strong. So what we're doing, first step what we did is put our mat down, it's like a 4-5mm rubber mat down for to keep the vibrations away from the bottom of the tank so it doesn't chafe. So we've got that down, run one belt around this way, around the tank, and then we run a secondary belt over the top in the middle of the tank to brace it down, and then we yank on our clips and hopefully everything stays together. I know that that Securing point is strong enough because I just pulled on it with everything I had. So after having two, we should be hundreds. In case you guys were wondering, we have two tanks of 150 liters each. So in total, we have 300 liters of diesel. So it's about 80 gallons. 80 gallons. I think. Don't know. We think. Put it in, put it in a calculator. <laughs> Added our straps. Now on to the next side. So removing the the compression fittings from the top of the tank that we can clean out all the fittings area, put new bedding, uh, gaskets, and seal up the tanks, and put them in the, in the place where they belong. Cutting these gaskets so that they can fit there, so that we can secure them on the underside of the tank, and then we'll trim them to size. So these are compression fittings and what I did is just bought one of those stainless steel adapters, 8 more, to fit our new fuel lines. They used to run co solid copper lines on the fuel line, but I don't want that anymore. So that's what I'm doing.
Put two straps on our tank. Shaking the whole boat pretty much. So that's gonna work. And I'm gonna put some a few wooden blocks on the edges just to make sure, just to make triple sure that nothing moves. These tanks can hold our 150 liters of diesel per side. So this is what our diesel full caps look like. See, they look real pretty. So we're gonna polish them up. And if you if you like the process, you wanna see how we did it, what principle we used, there's a, we'll leave a link, link in the description below for the video where we actually demonstrate what we used, how we use unitized discs and polishing wheels to polish it up. We just got here to Berryman, gonna get our fuel lines from these guys. These guys pretty much stock everything. So if you're in South Africa or or you're visiting with a boat or whatever. These guys pretty much stock it all. They'll pretty much help you out. Fuel lines, bearings, bushes, uh, pulleys, belts, all of that kind of stuff. These guys will stock it. Even some special adhesives and all of that. They also got it. Um, yeah, so let's go get that fuel line and then we're good to go and hopefully put in those tanks. Okay, here's our second tank. These are 150 litre tanks. These are return line, supply line, breather lines, just the braided hose. It's all it's going to do is just breathe and hopefully we'll keep the level not too high that there's its fuel in there. And that's just the connector between the two stainless steel pieces, which is a piece of reinforced hose. So that the top stainless steel part, it comes through that all over there comes all the way up to about over here. So it's just the seal between the two. We're gonna clamp that and we're gonna double clamp the top one just to make sure that there's no leaks. And we use two different colors. That's actually a better quality line, but they're both continental lines. Very, very good quality fuel lines. So we won't have them falling apart in say a year's time or something. There's the tank nicely nested in a hole. And check it this. That's what those belts do. <laughs> it's super super tight. Make sure that those, I'm gonna put some clips here so that those hold like that. And done. And I also put a plank up front and a plank at the back as an extra measure. And I'll take a plank over here on the inside of these. Just for bonus. But she's not going anywhere. All the plumbing in there. That's the bottom of the seat. I think I'm still going to put in the full cap in there, then both lines run into there. And that's what they look like afterwards. Hello! And proof to you it's not a new one. This is how it grown, there's all the old paint and stuff there. So guys, I know that sometimes we make these videos and some, some of the stuff seems like it goes by super fast, but it doesn't. To give you an example, these tanks have taken us three days to install. Firstly, couldn't get the right diesel line. Well, we could, but it's cheap line and we're gonna replace it and we don't wanna do that, so we put proper line in. Secondly, we forgot we had stored these two puppies, which is our diesel fault. We don't wanna buy new ones because these things are like 40, 50 dollars a piece. And we broke that too. So, so we repurposed them, but damn, they look good. So we made them look good and now we finally got the tanks in. All the lines are connected three days later. Freaking insane. Some of the stuff's super deceiving on how long certain processes take. Sometimes we think like there's complex things and it goes by really quick. And then sometimes it's like something like a stupid diesel tank which keeps you up for three days trying to get things. It's not that it takes you three days to install it. Is that it sometimes just takes three days to kind of and you don't want to waste half a day trying to go track something down so you wait for the guy to get back to you while he's and you do something else in the meantime 
So that's how it goes. That's why we stagger a whole bunch of things and we don't sometimes finish one thing from start to finish. It's because we're waiting for parts or for something to arrive for that particular item. So we get on with the next project. Like that, we stagger things and we work at night to try and do the things that we can do inside and we don't need to be outside. Because it's winter now, it's a little chilly and it gets down to the single digits Celsius, obviously. So our fuel caps are installed and connected there on the braided hose and to the other other stainless steel piece over there so we can fill up our tanks from outside. Our one diesel tank fill cap which is there on our starboard side and then our other diesel fill cap which is on our port side. Diesel tanks. Oh you ripped it and all. Yes. That's how long she took, she even wants to stay there. And by the way guys, if you like what we're doing and you want to see more of this, please subscribe below, hit that bell and check out the links in the description below. Sweet. Stay tuned till next week where we install our awesome thousand watts worth of solar panels.